we have all experienced the curse of cold shop coffee. Now is the time to solve this problem once and for all. For this project, I would need two 12 inch lengths of 4 inch by 3 16 inch square tube. I have been intrigued by the physics behind rocket stoves for quite a while, and I wanted to build one for myself, as long as it would look and work great too. A rocket stove can be as simple as two tubes meeting at a 45 degree angle, but I wanted one that was worthy of the name rocket. These paper patterns will make the layout easy. The steel will need to be degreased so that the patterns will stick to them. The design achieves the look of complexity through simply tapering the tubes. Center lines on the tube help to align the patterns. I will use spray adhesive to apply the patterns to the tube, avoiding the tube seam if I can help it. For cutting out the parts, I will use a cutoff disc and a reciprocating metal saw with a metal cutting blade. You could cut everything out with a grinder, but the saw is much less dramatic and it works great. I am leaving a bit of extra on the parts so I can clean everything up on the belt sander. The accuracy of these parts is less important than the symmetry. Once everything is cut out, WD-40 or Goo Gone will help to remove the patterns. At this point, I will start paring off the parts into the chimney, stove top, and stove bottom. Warning. Read and follow all labels and the owner's manual. I am simply tacking these parts together while checking the fit with corresponding pieces, adjusting if necessary. I want to thank Miller Electric for providing me with the PPE you see in this video. It is important to stay safe and to wear appropriate protection while welding. Please check out the description for more information. First, I'll weld in what will be the floor of the stove. I'm tacking this for now, and later it'll be welded completely on the outside. I can now focus on the combination shelf and air vent. I cut some expanded metal and tacked it to the shelf. I cut the shelf pattern from 8th inch steel as it seemed appropriate. It could be slightly thicker or thinner depending on what was laying around. This was then fit to the bottom of the stove. This shelf will be held in place by a piece of steel at the middle and some tacks on the side for support. 
The best thing about working with steel is how fast the glue dries. This shelf wants to be removable for easy cleaning of ashes and soot. Now to focus on the chimney. This is held in position and tacked into place. Once everything is tacked, the seam can be fully welded. I alternated the sides to make sure things didn't get weird due to the heat. If I build another one of these, I might consider leaving the welds for a more industrial look. Now both ends could be ground planar, paying special attention to the mating surface. Next, I'll join the chimney to the top of the stove. This order allows for access to the welds on the inside of the stove and establishes the geometry for the hatch. For this door, I'll be using a piece of piano hinge. I will simply tack this in place. Now, the final fit can be checked. This handle will provide a way to open and close the access hatch. Once this works perfectly, the bottom and top of the stove could be joined into one. Once again, grinding the faces to be planar. Now it's time to add the feet.
the stove body complete, I can focus on the cooking surface. I cut a one and a half inch length of tube and some expanded metal. A half inch spacer was made to hold the face grid off the chimney. I considered painting this with my favorite black barbecue paint, but I chose not to, allowing it to instead develop its own patina. I'm very happy I did. Until next time.